Hello and welcome to the Dark Mount video review for Takara Tomy Lost Age AD11 Dispenser. Now this is a Japanese exclusive for the time being toy from the Japanese Age of Extinction Transformers 4 line, which over there is called Lost Age. Um, basically it's just, uh, I'm not remembering the name of the, I think it's a Revenge of the Fallen toy that he's a repaint of, but basically it was like this blue... I think he was like a armored money truck kind of thing or something, I don't know. Um, I never liked the way that mold looked, so I never got him. And this is a repaint that is meant to homage the um, Mountain Dew robots that have been in a couple of the movies, and uh, specifically the, the... It's a vending machine, technically, I mean, which they tried to replicate on the back here, and we'll get into that later, but... Uh, it's meant to homage the vending machine robot, but obviously they used a repaint of a truck. So, it's not screen accurate, it's not exact, but it's still pretty cool to have, and uh, personally I think it looks much better than the original use of this mold, so it's a win-win. So, as you can see, he is a truck. And his weapon plugs in on the side here. In this mode, the only real gimmick uh, he has to speak of is the fact that they attempted to replicate the vending machine uh, design on the front of the truck here, or uh, the top of the truck, sorry. And what you can do, due to transformation, is actually pop this whole thing up like that. And uh, it kind of becomes like a little makeshift vending machine that you can have places, um, which is cool. It's a, it's a nice touch. Obviously, again, does not perfectly replicate a vending machine, but <laughs> you can see how it could be cleverly used to do so in certain situations. Um, you could have guys posed around here or whatever on your display and just have like a little Mountain Dew vending machine thing there. So, it's, it's a nice little touch that they threw in. It's definitely appreciated. Obviously, it's not going to perfectly represent a vending machine, but I wouldn't really... Well, I guess they made a toaster for the first movie, so making a vending machine transformer wouldn't be completely insane. Maybe they will at some point, who knows. Probably not at this point. I'd rather get that Oreo bot from the new movie, but whatever. That's just me. Alright, and uh, here he is with... Um, Drift from the Age of Extinction line. So he's like pretty much a normal deluxe. Obviously he's a little taller. But surprisingly enough, he becomes a pretty stout little robot, so. There he is with There's my other vehicle though. Here he is with Joe from the Dark of the Moon line. Now to get into transformation, we want to come back up here and detach this whole top section, which pegs in lightly here and there, but mainly just right up here, it uh, uses these to peg into these bars. And you just want to flop that down like that. And then what you want to do is come in here and just kind of loosely disconnect these, and then you can use this little joint right here to kind of pull them out loosely. Again camera up now. Disconnect that, and then angle them out. And then you can just take this whole part, whole top section, and just kind of maneuver it up and over. These two little sections just fit around this big bar. And they will pull down, and then rotate. And you want to fold these little bits in like that. Fold these up. And then you can just kind of fold these down around to your liking. You can do pretty much whatever you want with them. I just fold them down until they stop. And then what you want to do is bend these knees just enough that you can pull these little knee guards out because they actually retract down into the knees during transformation. You can fiddle around with that 
later. And you want to take this whole thing right here, and it's on a sliding joint. So you just want to collapse it in like that. And then I'm going to take this whole thing and split it. And then just fold these down around. They're on these kind of double hinge joints. Like that. And then this peg will peg into there. On both sides. And then you can just kind of get the arms out of your way. And this will kind of click down. It doesn't really peg in specifically, but it kind of clicks into place. And then these little pegs right here will peg into the center of the hubcaps. Let's split the legs. Go ahead and maneuver them so he can stand. And then you want to open this arm up and you can pull out the hand. And obviously you can do that on either side, but we're going to be attaching his weapon, so I'm not going to do it on this hand. Speaking of, you can then take his weapon, which is kind of like a bunch of little soda can gun type thing. And this will peg onto this peg right here on his arm. And then he's got his little Gatlin gun weapon. And there is Dispenser in his robot mode. And yeah, I really like this guy. Um, I think this is a much, much better use of the mold than the original. Uh, the green just does a much better job. It's kind of coming up like a dull turquoisey color on my camera right now, I think. But it is definitely a pretty solid green. Let me see if I can get it to correct the color. Mm, not really. It is a, it is a very good green. Uh, it's like a, a light forest green. It's, it's perfect. So, obviously, you can tell this has a gimmick um, just by looking at <laughs> this giant thing sticking out of its back. Um, what you can do there is push that in, and you'll actually get a giant, I think they call it a capture claw or something. Uh, that kind of pops out of his stomach. Yeah. Um, it's not the most terrible gimmick I've ever seen in my life, I've got to be honest. There are worse gimmicks in the world, but I still just hate gimmicks. Um, that right there, that little thing, is not worth having this giant thing hanging off the back of the toy. Uh, it's just not. So... Maybe kids out there love that kind of stuff, but I never did when I was a kid, and I definitely do not like it now. Uh, I really do think it just... It requires unnecessary sacrifices in either one or both modes. Uh, in this case, only one of them. It, it really doesn't affect the vehicle mode at all. Uh, this thing actually makes the vehicle mode peg together very stably, so it's not a, a terrible thing. Um, but it's, it's really just not worth it for the robot mode. I would have much rather seen this just be molded detail uh, and then have this kind of fold down or something because this whole thing sticking out is just lame. And the problem is, since this is the front of the vehicle mode and you really need it, you can't even really do anything to remove it. It's not like you could like glue these parts into place and just take this whole thing out, because then you, you wouldn't be able to transform the figure, I don't think, because you really need this uh, stuff for these things to clip around and peg into and, and keep the vehicle mode steady. So that's kind of unfortunate that there's not really anything you can do there. Uh, if someone was some kind of an expert modder, they might be able to take this whole assembly out and then install some kind of fold-down flap or something, and, and maybe that would work. Um, that is far above my pay grade when it comes to modding figures, so... I'm just gonna have to deal with it, but it really doesn't detract from the figure that much, as far as I'm concerned. There are tons of figures that have a lot of back kibble and stuff. This is just a slightly more than you're used to. Um... This whole part, for some reason, comes off, and as I do not have the original figure, I don't know if this came off on the original as well. I have no way to know, because I don't have it. Um, why it comes off, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know if that is to facilitate easy remolds on their part. Uh, I don't necessarily think it would be, because 
this head's just attached, so I feel like they could just pop a new head onto it. That wouldn't really require... I don't know. I have no clue what that's all about. Um, I think this part might be molded a little differently, so... Maybe that's specific to this mold and that's just how they redid this part. Who knows? For articulation, his arms are on... or his shoulders, rather, are on ball joints. And he has an upper arm swivel. And pretty good um, elbow bend. And then his hands are on ball joints, but you kind of have to open this thing up to give them full range. Uh, or it starts hitting into things. The waist is articulated. The hips are on ball joints. The knees have a pretty decent range of motion, but not great. These little things can move, and the feet can move, but they are pretty tight, and they do lock in in a couple places. The head is actually not very articulated. Um, it can rotate. There's kind of an assembly in here that makes it look like it should be able to move uh, up and down, but I can't really get that to work, and I don't really want to break the head or break the paint, so I'm not going to force that. So It may do that as well if you figure out whatever's blocking it, but I'm not going to be doing that. And then because of the way this pegs in, you kind of get some articulation there, so you could have like a, a bent arm kind of look going on with the gun, which is neat. For some size comparisons, here he is with a Dark of the Moon Deluxe, namely Thundercracker. Ooh, pretty evenly sized. And here he is with an Age of Extinction Deluxe, namely Slash. So again, he fits in scale-wise pretty well. All in all, this is a really good figure. Uh, I think this is, like I said, a, a much better use of the mold than the original. Uh, I think the colors work better. I think the <clears throat> paint details that they put in a couple places are cool. I like the fact that they tried to replicate the uh, vending machine look. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I like the head a lot more. The head on the other one was kind of a weird, robo-y looking thing. Uh, and this looks like very Decepticon-y. And I like Decepticon heads in the movie. I know lots of other people think they look like bugs or whatever, but... I like them. I am a movie-verse fan, even though the plots are terrible. I like the designs. <laughs> But yeah, I can't really muster any complaints about this guy, um, except this thing. I just don't like gimmicks, and I'm always kind of hesitant to put that as a complaint because there are people who like gimmicks, and they like their toys having kind of special features that are specific to that toy. Um, I would just prefer to have a, a more cohesive toy with a better transformation and not something sticking off of its back, but that's kind of more of a personal choice than a, than a problem, so while I would technically list that, <clears throat> as a complaint, um, I don't know if that's necessarily fair. Um, there are just bad gimmicks in the world that I would just absolutely list as a complaint because they're just poorly implemented. This actually isn't a bad gimmick. It, it works. It gives a decent effect. The claw is very large. It can actually, like, grab other figures. Let's see if I can get it to actually do this on tape. Well, he's kind of a terrible example because his torso is shaped so weirdly. But he can, like, actually grab other figures. Um, so, it's it's an effective... It's an effective gimmick. It's not like it doesn't work. Um, it definitely works. It's just an issue of whether or not it's worth having this giant thing sticking off the toy. Since that's the way it's designed, and we can't do anything about it at this point, <laughs> it's kind of a moot point.
but yep, um, I don't think you'd be disappointed if you got this guy. I wouldn't pay like mucho mucho bucks to import him, but I got him for basically the same price as other deluxes and stuff on Big Bad Toy Store, so uh, I know he's a little expensive on Amazon right now. I don't really shop anywhere except Amazon and Big Bad Toy Store, uh, so I can't really speak to any other like Captured Prey or any of those smaller outlets that people use, but um, check there guys. I mean, if this is something you're looking to get, I would definitely pick it up. It's definitely worth getting. Um, it's just probably not worth like the 40 bucks that people are charging on Amazon for it. It's, it's a deluxe figure, so I wouldn't pay that much more than a normal deluxe price for it. Yeah, but uh, definitely good. Really, really can't complain about anything at all. So I think you guys will like it if you go for it. And also, like, it's it says Mood Whiplash because they can't steal another person's trademark, but like it's a Mountain Dew Transformer. How much more do you need to know than that? It's a Mountain Dew Transformer. So yeah, enough said. Thanks for watching guys. See you later.